Today we're going to take a look at the Plexter M6M, an M SATA SSD, the littlest of SSDs. This is an unboxing and overview of the Plexter M6M and perhaps sets a new tech syndicate record for the least amount of packing material in an unboxing. It's literally this one little piece of plastic and then the drive, and that's literally it. So this is an M SATA drive. Now, M SATA you see more often than not in notebooks and laptops and some tablets. You do see it in desktops. We're going to be testing it in an Asus Z87WS workstation board, which has the uh, SATA 3 6 gigabit per second M SATA port, which is nice. This M SATA drive is a 256 gigabyte capacity. Uh, Plexter advertises it at a 520 megabyte per second read and a 440 megabyte per second write with uh, up to 80K uh, IOPS in, in like 4K writes, which is the thing that I was interested in because that's a pretty good score. Um, now this thing is based on the new Toshiba 19 nanometer flash. Sometimes you see that referred to as toggle flash. And this is also based around a Marvell 88SS9188 controller. Now Plexter tells me that they've really done a lot of work on the firmware on this and that they've really customized it for data security and integrity, you know, all that. And it also comes with a three year warranty. So let's take a look. So the quick overview is if you want the numbers, check out the website. The website will have a, an article with uh, screenshots and the, the numbers here. We've got some of the numbers on screen for you if you want to take a look at. Now the reads on a brand new drive out of the box getting better than advertised. We were at almost 540 megabytes per second on the reads. But for some reason, I never could get the, the writes to go more, to go faster than about 380 megabytes per second on average. There's also a lot of variability. Um, in the extended testing of the drive where we filled up the drive and then we erased everything and then we filled it up and we erased it, um, the, the IO performance was a little random. Like it wasn't consistently 80K IOPS. It, was, it would occasionally drop down for just a, a couple of reads in terms of the, the time it took to do the read. And I'm not really sure why. Um, if we let, if we filled up the drive and then we emptied it and we let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes, we didn't see that as much. So I think that's just down to the particulars on the controller. And I think that you're going to get better performance out of this drive if you keep it about 10% empty so that it's got a little bit of room to work and, and do the garbage collection. I think that's just a characteristic of this kind of SSD in general, and it's not really a fault with the drive. It certainly was not a showstopper. It's it more of a curiosity. In terms of real world performance, we really didn't feel a hitch. I mean, we, we loaded a bunch of games, moving around Bioshock level loading, things like that, where it's got the transparent level. There were no hitches, anything like that. Um, you know, the performance was pretty consistent overall with, with the, the one exception that we noted. Um, clearly, Plexter has put a lot of work into the firmware running on this with the Marvel controller. I do think Plexter's in a rough position here because, you know, Plexter doesn't manufacture their own NAND and they don't manufacture their own controller. So what they've really got to bring to the table here is engineering to use, you know, other people's parts in a clever way. And they've also got the engineering that goes into the firmware, which is, you know, it, you really shouldn't understate that. It's sort of an important thing. So Plexter is providing a three-year warranty and they are providing, you know, a ton of support um, for this, that, and the other. And so we should give them kudos for that. But that said, in terms of competition, Flexter is really at a disadvantage because they don't have their own NAND fab. And so, you know, Samsung, which does, and Toshiba that does, are going to be at a, at, at a competitive advantage because, you know, most of the cost here is in the NAND production. But that said, you know, Flexter's got to deal with Toshiba and the Toshiba uh, toggle flash looks like it's going to be a really solid performer in the market. This thing is also rated at 66 gigabytes per day uh, for writes for endurance. So that's a pretty good number considering that the capacity of the thing is, the, the one we're reviewing is 256 gigabytes. So and it does come with a three-year warranty. So if you're in the market for an M SATA SSD, uh, the Plextor M6M family is definitely worth a look. There are capacities that range from 64 gigabytes to 512 gigabytes. The 64 gigabyte capacity would be appropriate if you're going to use like Intel storage acceleration or anything like that. Although beware that the write speed of that 64 gigabyte drive is only about 160, advertised is only about 160, 150 megabytes per second, something like that. And you might want to opt for the 128 gig, even though the Intel storage acceleration stuff will only use 256 gig if you want that right acceleration. Everything with this drive comes down to price. Can Plexter deliver a competitive price with the Toshiba NAND parts and the Marvell controller 
and provide a solid value in terms of what they've done in terms of the firmware engineering and the reliability engineering on this particular drive. If you got one, you know, let me know. Um, send me a message to the site or comment below and, and let me know what your opinion is. We're going to keep doing some testing and we're going to post some more benchmark information and we're going to post a how-to video on, you know, how to use one of these to upgrade your notebook. So that's it for this video. If you like it, rate, subscribe, comment. Until next time. Bye.